If you don't understand the details of the ISC squared code of ethics, you're giving up some easy points on your CISP or SSCP certification exam. Hi, I'm Mike Chappell, a cybersecurity certification expert and one of the authors of the official CISP study guide. In this video, I'm going to share everything that you need to know about the ethics code before you take your next cybersecurity certification exam. Now, the code begins with a preamble that describes the purpose of the code. It reads, the safety and welfare of society and the common good, duty to our principles and to each other, requires that we adhere and be seen to adhere to the highest ethical standards of behavior. Therefore, strict adherence to this code is a condition of certification. Now, that preamble is important, but there's not a whole lot in it that you need to know for the exam. It's basically saying that ethics are important and that certified individuals must comply with the ISC squared code of ethics. The details come in when we look at the four canons of the code. These are four pretty simple statements that outline what is expected of individuals who subscribe to the code. And these are must-know facts for your exam. If you haven't already, you will want to memorize them. Now, you don't necessarily need to be able to recite them word for word, but you do need to know the general idea behind each one. The first canon of the Code of Ethics is that you must protect society, the common good, necessary public trust and confidence, and the infrastructure. This canon basically means that the actions you take or fail to take must support the betterment of society. As a certified security professional, you have an obligation to protect the common good. For example, a security professional who uses their skills to engage in unethical hacking activities would violate this canon of the code. The second canon is that you must act honorably, justly, responsibly, and legally. The bottom line here is that you may not break the law, lie, or commit any other dishonorable, unjust, or irresponsible action. For example, a security professional who makes an error that leads to a compromise at their organization and then covers up and lies about their mistake is violating this canon of the Code of Ethics. The third canon is that you must provide diligent and competent service to principals. As a security professional, you must carry out your duties in a responsible manner. Now, the code uses the word principal here because it's meant to apply to your employer, if you're a normal employee, or to your clients if you're a consultant. Basically, whoever you're working for has the right to expect your diligent and competent service. A security professional who fails to carry out their assigned and agreed upon duties is violating this canon. And finally, the fourth canon is that you must advance and protect the profession. The actions you take should help rather than detract from the profession at large. The most common ways that this canon is violated are when certified individuals provide unauthorized assistance on exams, violate the ISC squared non-disclosure agreement, or provide false information on an applicant's endorsement application. Now there's a lot more that you need to know about the code, including your obligation to report violations, who has standing to file different types of complaints, and the consequences of a violation. But before we get to those, I just want to take a moment to invite you to visit my website at certmike.com. On that site, I have free study plans put together to help you earn your next cybersecurity certification. The plans tie together the content that you'll find in study guides, video courses, and practice tests to help you prepare for your next certification exam and pass it on the first try. Also, if you're enjoying this video, please take a moment to click the like button below to help other people discover it. And if you subscribe to my channel, you'll be among the first to see my other cybersecurity videos as they come out. All right, let's get back to the code of ethics. Let's talk about the process that you must follow if you suspect that another ISC squared member has violated the code of ethics. The code does contain a statement that requires you to take action. It reads, ISC squared members are obligated to follow the ethics complaint procedure upon observing any action by an ISC squared member that breaches the code. Failure to do so may be considered a breach of the code pursuant to Canon 4. So if you witness a violation of the code of ethics and you don't report it, you yourself are violating the code and you're subject to sanctions. If you find yourself in a situation where you need to submit a violation report, you must submit a written, notarized affidavit using the form supplied on the ISC Squared website. It must include the name of the accused person, 
the nature of the violation, the specific canon or canons of the code of ethics that were breached, the reason that you have standing to file a complaint, and any corroborating evidence. Now I mentioned there that you must demonstrate that you have standing to file the complaint. That means that the alleged behavior must harm you or your profession in some way. Standing varies based upon the canon involved. Canons 1 and 2 are about protecting society at large and acting responsibly. Anyone may be harmed by these violations, so any member of the public has standing to file a complaint about Canons 1 and 2. Canon 3 is about service to principals, employers or clients, so only employers or clients of the individual have standing to file a complaint under Canon 3. And Canon 4 is about protecting the profession, so other professionals have standing to file a complaint about Canon 4 violations. Now this doesn't mean that you have to be a CISP or even a security professional. Anyone who is certified or licensed in any field and subscribes to a code of ethics themselves may file a complaint under Canon 4. For example, a certified public accountant or a licensed healthcare professional would both have standing to file a Canon 4 complaint. Once a complaint is filed, the ISC Squared Ethics Committee takes over. They will allow the accused individual to respond, gather any additional evidence that they wish, and reach a determination. If they find that an individual has violated the code of ethics, they may revoke that individual's certification. Now that's everything you need to know about the ISC Squared Code of Ethics when you take your next exam. If you found this video helpful, please click the like button below and subscribe for more cybersecurity certification content.